Good morning, Tante. Okay, so now we are on live and uh, through the Facebook page, Dhammika Live. So uh, my name is uh, Venerable Thiavi Sok, or in Buddhist name, Muniputo, and I'm from uh, Seattle, Washington State, uh, USA. So we are very honored to uh, have invited uh, Most Venerable uh, Dr. Chantima from uh, Canada. Uh, so I will introduce him in a minute, uh, but before that, uh, we shall start by uh, paying homage to the Triple Gem by reciting the Motasa three times together. Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa Namo Tassa Bhagavato Arahato Sama Sambuddhasa all right, greeting everyone again. Nice to see all of you here. And we are in the Zoom right now, 21 people. And there are some people who are following us on the Facebook Live as well. So <clears throat> hope we all can acquire more knowledge about the applications of mindfulness, Satipatthana Sutta, which are vulnerable. Dr. Chandima will be delivering in a short moment. But before that, I would like to introduce a little bit about uh, Venerable, just a short uh, introduction about uh, Venerable uh, Dr. Gango Dawila Chandima. He is a Canadian Buddhist monk uh, and also resident in the uh, Theravada Buddhist Vihara in Ottawa, Canada. Uh, in 2015, uh, Venerable earned a PhD degree in Sanskrit from the University of uh, Sri Jayavadana Bura in Sri Lanka. And uh, Ponte also uh, is a senior um, advisor at uh, Padisota, and he has been, um, you know, serving uh, in many great works for the sake of the community in uh, Canada as well as in uh, many other places and you can follow him uh, his works uh, on Facebook and also in his uh, blog blogspot.com. Uh, so uh, well before we start to the lecture uh, I would like to invite everyone here just to introduce yourself your name and the place where you live please go ahead Good evening, Pante, uh, and good evening, everyone. <laughs> Sorry, <Mo. laughs> uh, My name is uh, I'm from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Thank you. Well, Namaste, Pante. I'm Ho Srepek from Cambodia. Now, right now, in uh, Golan Mountain. Good evening from Cambodia, Pante. Good morning. Oh, Min, Mina, I think you're muted. Oh, okay. Okay. Um, I'll let you go first. Okay. One more time. Unmute, unmute. <laughs> thank you. Hi. Hello, my name's, thank you. Uh, my name's Mina Madhukanta. I'm from United Kingdom. I'm in London, and I thought I'd come and join you all today. Thank you. Good morning from Seattle. My name is Sakan Tim. Good morning, Pante. I can open camera. <laughs> now, uh, my name comes here. Now I at we pass now to at Dong in Kanda province from Cambodia. Mm. 
I'm with Kam Chiang as well. We we come here together for meditation. So we are at the Pasana Turiya Buddhist Center. So thank you so much. Good morning, Pante. I'm Sherry here from Singapore. Um, one day, sorry, I'm using my handphone for the Zoom, so I, I'm pro probably I can't go the handphone like that for two hours. Apologize. Good morning, Ponte. Uh, my name is Sampi. I'm from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Good morning, Pante. I am Kunmili Malai from Washington State, USA. Thank you. Good evening, Pante. I am Sampot from Phnom Penh, Cambodia. Thank you. I'm greeting from Phnom Penh. And good morning, Pante. My name is Pisai from Cambodia. Good evening, Pante. My name is Lisa. I'm from Cambodia. Thank you. Good morning, Ponte. I'm Heng Wune from California. Thank you, Ponte. Good morning, Ponte. I'm Nathan Barnes from near Portland, Oregon. My <clears throat> All right, Pante, I think uh, you can start right now. And so please uh, mute everybody. Okay, Pante, you can share screen too if you wish. I just make you a uh, co host. <clears throat> Namu Tase Bhagavatu Arahatu Sama Sambuddhase. Good morning, everyone, and good evening, everyone. Uh, thank you, Bhante uh, Muniputo. I'm, uh, you know, comfortable in pronouncing that Pali word properly, name. Thank you for inviting me, and uh, thank you for uh, Dhammika Academy and, you know, related organizations for inviting me, for giving this uh, uh, lecture. Okay, so I think uh, uh, we took some time uh, in introducing everyone, but it's okay. It's, it's good to know everyone. Uh, there are people that I know as well. Uh, thank you uh, for joining to listen to the talk. Um, so let me share the slide first so that I can easily describe. Okay, so the four applications of mindfulness, and we call them uh, satipatthana. Uh, chattaro, chattaro means four. Uh, that's how uh, uh, our topic, uh, you know, uh, is reflected uh, in today's talk. So uh, the first thing that I want to tell you is that uh, uh, this is the sutta. I mean, there are two suttas that uh, you might see uh, in regard to uh, satipatthana. So uh, 
the popular name is uh, Sat uh, mindfulness. So there are two main suttas that uh, talk about uh, this topic. They are DN22, that means Diga Nikaya 22, Mahasatipatthana Sutta, which is the longest, uh, the most extensive version of the, uh, the subject. And then uh, MN10, which means Majjhima Nikaya, uh, which has an abridged uh, version of Satipatthana Sutta. I think we um, oftentimes uh, deal with this sutta, I mean, talk about this sutta because, uh, you know, it is in short. But there is a difference between these two suttas, uh, you know, uh, except the, the length. The main difference between these two suttas is that uh, in the Mahasatipatthana Sutta, we can see that uh, there is a broad treatment. I mean, there is a deep analysis about the Satcha Pappa of the Dhammanupassana Satipatthana. You know, there are four Satipatthanas, which we'll uh, talk about later. Kayanupasana, Vedilanupasana, Chittanupasana, Dhammanupasana. So you can see this Dhammanupasana uh, Satipatthana uh, has been uh, explained in great details in the Mahasatipatthana Sutta. Other than that, I don't see there is a uh, big difference between the two, two suttas. Also, uh, I wanted to tell you that uh, not only these two suttas talk about Satipatthana. If you, if you can take a look at uh, Sangyutta Nikaya, uh, there is a Sangyutta called, I think, 47 uh, Sangyutta, uh, which is called Satipatthana Sangyutta, which has 104 suttas. Uh, in all these suttas, we can see that uh, there are information about Satipatthana, but there's a difference between uh, Satipatthana Sangyutta and these two suttas. That difference is, we don't see a combination of the four Satipatthanas in, in all these suttas, I mean, which you see in the Satipatthana Sangyutta. Uh, only we can see this framework of the four Satipatthanas in, uh, I mean, uh, in particular, uh, in these suttas called Mahasatipatthana Sutta and Satipatthana Sutta. So uh, there are, uh, you know, other places, other references uh, about uh, Satipatthana in many other places, but, uh, you know, uh, most importantly, uh, these two suttas uh, combine the framework of these Satipatthanas uh, in great details. Okay, so before I jump into the four Satipatthanas, uh, let me, uh, share with you uh, some, uh, you know, interesting points about uh, the whole sutta, especially some words. Now, what is Satipatthana? Now, Satipatthana has been translated by many to be foundation of mindfulness. Uh, they take it uh, by decombining Sati and uh, Patthana. But if you can take a look at of the uh, you know, the contents and, and the hidden and, and the broader meaning of these four Satipatthanas, you can uh, notice that, observe that it is not a foundation. It is, it is an establishment of Satipatthanas. So that is what we had to understand. Because if you take the Sanskrit word, um, you know, uh, in regard to Satipatthana, we can see Smrutyupasthana. So the word has been decombined in a way uh, as upatthana, not patthana, sati upatthana, not as sati patthana. So we had to take the bigger meaning of sati patthana as being sati upatthana. So sati upatthana means uh, is a process, is a process, a way of establishing mindfulness. So when you when you say foundation of meditation, mindfulness, then you will pick on the objects. You will take these four uh, satipatthanas as objects, but they are not, uh, you know, uh, mainly objects. They are uh, they are a process of uh, bringing you into, uh, you know, nibbana. That's why uh, it is said at the beginning of this sutta, beginning as well as the end, uh, this kind of a, a statement in part. Ekayano ayang bikkave magu sattanang visuttya soka paridavanang samatikamaya dukkha domanasanang atthangamaya 
ന്യായാസ അധികമായ നിബാനാസ് സച്ചക്രിയായ യതിതം ചത്താറു സതിപറ്റാണ് ഓക്കെ സോ ന ദ മീനിങ് ഓഫ് ദിസ് യു നോ സ്റ്റേറ്റ്മെന്റ് ഈസ് ദിസ് ഇസ് ദ ഡിറക്റ്റ് പാത്ത് ഫോർ ദ പ്യൂരിഫിക്കേഷൻ ഓഫ് ബീങ്സ് a kind of means a direct path now there will be a confusion to many uh, then what about uh, the noble uh, eightfold path uh, what's the connection between the noble eightfold path and uh, you know uh, satipatthana i will uh, get into that uh, at a later point but i will just give you a head set about it uh, you know the main difference between satipatthana and the uh, eightfold noble path is eight four noble path is the direct path but satipatthanas play a vital part of that uh, eight four noble path that's how we had to understand because there's no path other than uh, eight four noble path for someone to attain a nibbana and uh, the statement also says soka paridvanam samati kamaya for the surmounting of sorrow and lamentation because we always sort of pull and uh, you know lamenting about things we have we own people things and dukkha do manasanam attangamay for the disappearance of pain and grief this is another stage of so and lamentation and um nyaya sadigamay nyaya what is nyaya nyayo vuchati ariya attangiko makko so another word for uh, eight four noble path nyaya means the eight four noble path nibbana sasachi kriya and that is what we say uh, at the end uh, for the attainment of the true way uh, and the realization of nibbana okay so now the sutta i would say uh, satipatthana sutta's uh, background story was given in a place called kuru it is one of the uh, mahajanapadas in india Uh, when you go to commentary we understand this the people in the Jan- mahajanapada called kuru they come from the uttara kuru continent because in the buddhist teachings we have a different way of naming continents we call them jambudipa uh, ubbavideha aparagoyana uttara kuru so the eastern uh, continent if you take it as a as a circle and the eastern continent is called as uh, ubbavideha and the northern uh, continent is called as uh, uh, upper goyana and the western continent is called as uttara kuru and the southern continent is called as jambudipa i think this jambudipa which means india uh, is a bigger place uh, not not the india we see at the, at at this point so the commentary says the commentary to both uh, diganikaya uh, you know sutta satipatthana sutta and majjhimanikaya satipatthana sutta they say that people who live in kuru they come from uttara kuru continent uh, because there is a notion that these continents were uh, combined together you know uh, in the past and there was a small township called kammasadam so where this is where the buddha uh, you know gave this uh, dhamma talk and there were other few suttas buddha gave in this particular village mahanidana sutta diganikaya uh, and ananja sapai sutta uh, which is uh, in the majjhimanikaya as well so uh, with that i would like to uh, go into uh, the satipatthana's back again okay and there is a there is a thought that some people may have satipa satipatthana here uh, the all the satipatthanas reflect a non reactive awareness uh, which is not correct because uh, in the satipatthanas we don't see that uh, you can you can take it as a partial understanding but in the, all the satipatthanas we see that buddha asks us to uh, you know stay on to the a particular frame of our mindfulness which is either which is any of the uh, satipatthanas it's not that you are not reacting uh, you know to something it's not non reactive awareness uh, it's 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 how you going to uh, look at uh, the body uh, the feelings uh, mind and uh, you know mental uh, what do you call uh, factors 
properties. So you are not making stories for your body. You are not fabricating your body. You are not making stories for your uh, feelings. You are not fabricating your feelings. You are not uh, making your mind. You are not, uh, uh, I mean, making stories for your mind. You are not fabricating your mind. You are not fabricating or making uh, Dhamma. So you are looking at uh, these aspects of uh, mindfulness uh, just the way how uh, they are. You know, it's, it's a vipassana way. So that is what uh, we say. It's not non-reactive awareness. You have to understand what they are uh, in their own uh, perspective. Okay. So um, now we all have this subjective experience. So we uh, always uh, experience subjective experience. Even now, you are watching me, you are watching uh, through Zoom, and we have this subjective experience. You, are, you might compare, you might see your past experiences, your experiences now, and your experiences uh, which will be in the future. So in short, what we understand is we are trying to investigate our subjective experience through the four Satipatthanas. This is the main purpose of Satipatthana. We are trying to investigate our subjective experience through four Satipatthanas, which will take us to objective uh, understanding of uh, those uh, experiences because we are struggling with subjective experiences. Because when you take body, people uh, get stuck in the body. Uh, I mean, Simply speaking, we know, um, uh, sorry. Uh, simply speaking, uh, we know Nitya um, Sukha uh, Atta. So when we talk about our body, we always think it's permanent. When we talk about our, uh, you know, the, the sort of, uh, you know, happiness or suffering of the uh, body, we always take it as uh, not suffering. And then when it comes to the third part of that category, we say our body is, uh, you know, ours. So we always take in a way uh, with our subjective experience. But uh, true pra practicing satipatthanas, I mean, when it comes to even kaya nupasana, we're trying to see the body as it is, the feeling as it is, mind as it is, mental, what you call dhamma, not dhamma, dhamma, uh, as they are, because the Dhamma is, has couple meanings, multiple meanings. So Dhamma are mental uh, factors. So uh, we're going to see the body as it is. We're going to see uh, feeling as it is. We're going to see mind as it is. We're going to see uh, Dhammas, uh, phenomena as they are. So this is the purpose. There's no other purpose. In order this to happen, uh, we need to understand a couple more things. Now, Kayanupasana and Vedananupasana, they are mainly good for those who have a lot of craving for the body and the things, right? So that's what we understand through uh, Kayanupasana and Vedananupasana, which means uh, contemplation on uh, mindfulness on uh, the body and uh, feelings. While Chittanupasana and Dhammanupasana, they are good for those who have more intellectual kind of speculations who are more intellectual, because uh, that means they, they don't, that, that doesn't mean they don't have to practice the body, uh, which means Kaya and uh, uh, Vedana, but, uh, you know, Chitta and Dhamma are uh, more appropriate for them, because they have, they have this more intellectual speculations. So, uh, in short, if you are someone who are more uh, attached to body and feelings, then, uh, Kaya Nupasana, Vidana Nupasana could be the good Satipatthanas for you. But if you are if you are someone who is who is who is more an intellectual uh, lies person, then uh, you are good to go with uh, Chitta Chitta Nupasana and Dhamma Nupasana after you practicing uh, body and feeling Kaya and uh, Vedana. Also, we can see that the the five aggregates are also reflected in the Satipatthanas. If you can take a look at of Kayanupasana, mindfulness on uh, the body, uh, it has the Rupa Khandu. Rupa, we know there are five aggregates, right? Rupa, Vedana, Sanya, Sankara, Vijnana. 
So uh, rupa means, uh, you know, uh, matter. Uh, Vedana means uh, feelings. Sanya means perception. Sankara means, uh, you know, formations. And Vijnana means consciousness. So uh, even uh, if you take a look at of that analysis of the, uh, you know, body, uh, you can apply that to Satipatthana. So uh, we can see uh, the first aggregate in the uh, in the first, uh, uh, you know, Satipatthana kind of pasana. We can see Vedana in the Vedana pasana. We can see Vinyana in the Chittana pasana. We can see Sanya and Sankara aggregates in the Dhamma pasana. And the person who is struggling with each Satipatthana, uh, if we take a look at uh, that thing, we can see there are four people in my understanding. Slow craver, quick craver, slow theorizer, quick theorizer. Uh, craver in terms of craving. Huh? If you have a, if you have a slow kind of a craving, then kind of pasana is something that you can emphasize in your practice. If you have a quick, if you if you are someone who, I mean, uh, if you if you someone who is who is who is having craving uh, very fast about things and people, then vedana pasana. If you someone who takes time to theorize uh, phenomena, then uh, chitta pasana. But if you're someone who is, you know, theorizing uh, phenomena very fast, then dhamma pasana. So slow craver, quick craver, slow theorizer, quick theorizer. That's a kind of a good way of looking at different people. And uh, you know the wisdom that we have uh, regard in regard to these particular uh, particular can be this: if someone who is working towards kaya that person is trying to get rid of the absence of beauty. Now, beauty is something that we all appreciate, but uh, at times it can take us to different unnecessary paths, right? So if you really work on uh, Kayanupasana, what we understand is that we will have a sort of wisdom about the absence of beauty. In the Vedana Vipassana, you will see unsatisfactoriness, Vedana. Now, I can talk about that in the Vedana Vipassana a little bit more. Uh, we know that uh, we always get uh, dissatisfied with things we have. We think this is the best way to sit. And then uh, in five, six, seven, eight minutes, we think it's, this is not the best way that I like to uh, sit down. I'm going to move a little bit here and there, right? So we are sort of changing our, you know, uh, our postures, our things so that we will be happy. So that's what we can see uh, through Vedana Nupasana, which means we are struggling with we will understand unsatisfactoriness uh, as a nature of wisdom when we practice with an anupasana. Through practicing of a chitta anupasana, we will understand impermanence, anicca. And through practicing dhamma anupasana, we will understand absence of self. Because when you understand phenomena really well, then at the end, you will be having this, this, this wisdom of absence of self. Okay, so... Now, I want to talk about something really interesting in the Satipatthana Sutta. Okay, so in the Satipatthana Sutta, I don't want to go over everything because Satipatthana Sutta is a lengthy, lengthy uh, piece of work. So I wanted to t introduce uh, some of the very interesting highlights of this Sutta so that you will know how things, uh, you know, how the Dhamma uh, uh, teachings uh, make up in the sutta. I wanted to tell you there are two key instructions in the Satipatthana sutta. They are definition and refrain. Take a good look. Definition and refrain. So, so these two make up, these two include uh, everything. If you can take a look at all, each practices of Kayanupasana, Vedananupasana, Chittanupasana, Dhamma Anupasana, you will see a definition and a refrain. Now, let me read the first, uh, uh, before that, before that, let me tell you how many practice exercises you can see in the Satipatthana Sutta. 21 exercises if you can see in the Satipatthana Sutta. You can see 14 exercises in terms of kind of, in kind of Pasana and uh, 15, 6, and 2 exercises uh, in 
chitta, sorry, Vedanta Pasana and Chitta Pasana, and another five exercises in the Dhamma Pasana. So altogether, there are 21 exercises that one can practice. Some might ask, should I need to practice all these four to attain Nibbana? Not necessarily. Some people may need to take it uh, along the four Satipatthanas, but even by practicing Kayan Pasana, you can attain Nibbana. You can uh, be insightful, but it depends on the different characters uh, you know, of individuals. That's something to think about. And as I told you, there are 21 exercises. Uh, so uh, now each Satipatthana exercise has a, uh, has a definition as well as a uh, refrain. Let me show you one more time. What are they? Okay, the first, first uh, type of definition is Atapi. What is Atapi? Atapi doesn't mean, now Atapi simply means physical modification at that time in India. Now, a lot of other contemporary, uh, you know, teachers, they, they practice, uh, you know, physical modification. But the Buddha said, what I ask you to do in terms of Satipatthana is not the physical modification, but the mental modification. So you have to uh, modify your mentality. So that's what uh, you need to practice. Uh, so Atapi simply means you mentally modify. How can you mentally modify? It is to be diligent. You have to practice skillful activities uh, at all times. If you have skillful activities, you're going to develop the skillful practices you have already. If you don't have skillful activities, uh, some of the skillful activities, you're going to uh, let them happen inside of you. So if you, if you have the bad uh, skill, you know, I would say unskillful activities, you're going to uh, let them go. If you don't have any unskillful activities that you see in other people, you don't let them happen. In. So that's what we say by being diligent. Atapi. And then Sampajano. What is Sampajano? Clearly knowing. Now, when I say clearly knowing, this is pretty interesting because some people might think then clearly knowing and wisdom could be the same. No. Wisdom and clearly knowing, we call it Sampajanya as well. They are two different things. Now, for example, some one might say, one might tell a lie by clearly knowing it. But if you have wisdom, you won't tell a lie. You can't tell a lie. If you are wise, you won't tell a lie. But clearly knowing is a, is a, is a great um, attempt to understand what you are doing. So that's why Buddha says, uh, in all the Satipatthana practices, that uh, you need to practice Sampajano, clearly knowing uh, as the second thing. And also Satima, mindful, uh, which means, uh, you know, uh, uh, which means that you are in the moment, you are in the right moment. So this is the clear and the easiest way to understand Satima. But Satima doesn't work without Sampajana and Atapi, right? So you had to be diligent, you had to uh, know clearly what you are doing, and you had to be mindful. And at the same time, vineya loke abhicha do manasang. So this is what we had to be careful because oftentimes, because of, because of our mishandling of our experiences, uh, we might uh, get into uh, covetousness and discontent. So abhicha do manasa, are we gonna uh, free us from covetousness and discontent. Because covetousness and discontent won't pop up if you are diligent, clearly knowing, and mindful. So this is the definition to all the Satipatthanas. And the refrain. How do we practice the, the particular Satipatthanas? There are four ways to practice. At the end of uh, uh, the def each definition, you need to practice it internally, externally. For example, let's say I take uh, the first exercise called anapanasati, the breathing. So I look at my breathing uh, as it is. And also, if I keep doing it for long, I might be self-centered, which is not good. So I need to look at some other people, people I know uh, about the same thing. I can 
I can look at someone else breathing. So internal and external, so both ways have to be practiced. Also, Samudaya and Vaya, I also need to look at the arising and passing away, which means Anicca Dukkha Anatta, nature of my breathing, so that I'm not getting stuck in my breathing. Now, uh, if you ask me the difference between a student uh, who is studying uh, in the medical school, uh, who is studying uh, anatomical things, anatomy, uh, what's the difference between someone who is studying anatomy and someone who is practicing uh, kind of asana? Because in kind of asana, you have uh, one, two exercises uh, in that we see uh, particular manasika, right? you are looking at uh, 32, I guess, uh, anatomical uh, parts of the body, as well as you, you're going to see at some points, uh, this is not necessary, but for some people at, at the time of the Buddha, uh, watching the nine charnel grounds, uh, what happens to a, a dead body. I mean, these two things are always being watched by medical students. So why they don't attain a kind of a higher state? Because they are not practicing refrain part. They are only looking at, their angle of looking at is, is mainly finding uh, something, maybe research. Uh, and they don't have this ajata uh, bahidda, which means they don't see internally and externally, as well as they don't see uh, through the arising and passing away uh, context when they're looking at 32 uh, body parts, as well as uh, the nine channel grounds. Also, uh, refrain also has uh, bare knowledge and continuous mindfulness. So, sati pachu patita hoti, yavadeva jnana mattaya, patisati mattaya. This is something very interesting. I want to tell you in the commentary, how does it say? What is sati pachu patita hoti? Whenever you know this is my breathing, this is someone else breathing, this is uh, the four postures, these are the, uh, you know, ways how I can practice clear knowing. This is how I need to, this is how I look at 32 uh, anatomical parts of the body. This is how I can see uh, elements of the body, I would say, uh, four, four great elements. This is how I'm going to look at the nine channel grounds. Then you will understand kayo atti na sato na puggalo na itti na puriso na atta na attanyam. There is only body exists, no person, uh, no being, no woman, no man, no self. Uh, there's no something that is possessed by somebody. It is just a body. And you will come to that understanding. That is what is called by sati pachu patita hoti or bare knowledge. You have this bare knowledge. There's no person, no uh, uh, male, females, uh, uh, no uh, animal, no being, just the body. So you will come to that understanding uh, after uh, internal, external contemplations arising, passing away concentrations, and then you will come to this bare knowledge. And then you will continue to practice the same contemplation. See, yavadeva jnana mattaya, patisati mattaya. Not even that at the end, you will end up being, under, uh, being understood by that these things uh, with regard to the body, uh, feelings, uh, you know, mind and dhamma, as I would say, phenomena, they are, uh, they are things that I should not, I should not, uh, you know, combine my mind with. I had to decombine my mind from these things. So, uh, you know, you are living without clinging to any of the, any of those, uh, you know, things that you make up uh, rather than you see what they are, uh, you know, in reality. So you will see this is only a body, this is only a feeling, this is only the mind, this is only Dhamma, nothing else. No stories attached to the body, no stories attached to your feelings, no stories attached to your uh, mind, no stories attached to your, attached to Dhammas that you see. That's very interesting. So I wanted to tell you that when you learn Satipatthana Sutta, please understand there are two key instructions definition and refrain, which apply to all the Satipatthana practices. There are 21 practices uh, which come under uh, Kaya Anupasana, Vedana Anupasana, Chitta Anupasana, Dhamma Anupasana. Please keep that in mind. And then, 
I'll come to this slide. Now you can see that there is a progression of the four satipatthanas. Now I start, I, I normally start from anapana and you can see when you practice anapana, you are in a better place to practice, sorry, uh, iriyapata, which means, uh, you know, body postures. When you practice body postures, you are in a better place to practice clear knowledge, sampajana, sampajana. That will help you to practice particular manasikara, datu manasikara, navasivatika. And then you are able to understand what your feelings exactly are, because they are both uh, given in ethical quality and affective quality, I will explain to you. And then the chittan pasana, which means higher states of mind and lower states of mind. And then you will end up in such, uh, see, see, the, see the end, uh, the summit of your uh, practice of satipatthana, you will end up in such a, so now someone might ask, what is the connection between anapana, breathing, and understanding the noble truths? I will tell you, the more calmer is your breath, uh, the easier you will be able to understand yourself. Because when you are so much happy, when you are so much greedy, when you are so much angry, when you are so much, uh, you know, dissolutional uh, in either, uh, you know, effective, uh, you know, levels, you can see that there are differences uh, of your breathing. That's why Buddha asked us to look at your breathing because if you, if you lower, if you can refine your breath by practicing anapanasati, you can achieve the rest of everything. You can easily attain the rest of the satipatthana. So there's a big, big connection between the breathing and the liberation nibbana. Now, if you can, if you can, that's why even the Buddha practiced anapanasati to attain the Buddhahood, right? So I ask you to understand that there's a big connection between breathing and attaining nibbana. Because if you work on uh, making your breathing more refined, more uh, light, lighter, and then you will be easily uh, getting to Nibbana because, because breathing is something we can always watch because we are just watching. We are not trying to uh, control our uh, breathing. So that will uh, easily uh, take you to understand the other Satipatthanas and then to attain the Nibbana. Now, if you take a look at our... Uh, Anapanasati, the first exercise, we know that in that there are a uh, few things to note. Uh, you uh, breathe in and breathe out. And then you just, uh, you know, know what is happening inside of you, long breath, short breath. But then when it comes to uh, the next level, you are trying to train yourself. Sabbakaya, Patisangvedi. You are trying to uh, experience the whole body. Uh, that experience of the whole body has to be done as a training, not as a knowing. Now, you, if you can take a look uh, at the Pali reference, so sato asasati sato pasasati digangva asasanto digang asasami di pajanati rasangva asasanto rasang asasami di pajanati. But when it comes to the next level, sabbakaya padisangvedi asasisami di sikkati. That means then we have to do some uh, training deliberately. So you're going to watch your long breaths uh, as they are. You're going to watch your short breaths as they are. After that, you're going to experience the whole body because with the breath, you understand, are there any uh, specific areas of my body, uh, you know, which I, which I need to work on? Uh, because my uh, I, I because I watch my breath, so you're gonna experience the whole body as a training. At the same time, you're gonna calm yourself, calm your kaya sankaras. Kaya sankara means in breath and out breath. You're gonna calm your in breath and out breath as a training. So you have to do uh, as a training, specifically those two things. 
And uh, there's an example. The example is a carpenter. When a, when a carpenter wants to make a shortcut, he makes a shortcut. When a carpenter wants to make a deep cut, he makes a deep cut. So carpenter understand this is a shortcut, this is a deep cut. The same way, short bread, long bread. So you understand what they are exactly in the way that uh, you notice. You are not trying to take breaths, but you are only know what they are. But when it comes to the third, fourth level, you just experience the body as a training. You have to train yourself. You have to deliberately do that as well as you're going to uh, calm your uh, in-breath and out-breath. I mean, which is a very good thing because when you're angry, when you, uh, you know, into other bad, unskillful qualities, the first thing I ask you to do is calm your in-breath and out-breath so that you are in a better place to uh, manage your situation. So that is Anapanasati. Uh, I think I will go a little bit, uh, uh, a little bit quick uh, about explanations because there are a lot to talk about, but I'm going to only talk about the main things. And when you go into four postures, what you understand is that you know uh, your four postures. Gachanto wa gachamiti pajanati. So when going, you know you're going. Uh, when standing, uh, uh, you know that uh, you stand. When you sit, you know, you sit. When you lie down, you know that you are lying. So this is what you practice. Uh, so uh, clear knowing has to be practiced that way. And uh, there are four other things with regard to uh, Sampajana. Uh, sorry, uh, that is regarding the Sampajana. So basically, when it comes to uh, four postures, you are uh, trying to understand your each postures at each time when you are switching, swinging. And then when it comes to Sampajana, we know it has a lot of other uh, basic activities you do, normal activities you do. Abhikante, patikante, Sampajana, kari, hodi. It means that when you uh, looking ahead, you know that you are looking ahead. When you are looking away, you know you are looking away. When you extend your limbs, when you stretch your limbs, uh, when you flex your limbs, you know that what you are doing. Uh, and uh, when you eat, you know you eat. When you uh, talk, uh, when you sleep, not even all that, but also tunhi bave. Even when you don't talk, when you uh, keep yourself silent, you know why I am silent. So, the, so you have to practice sampajanya, sampajana in all those ways whenever possible. And in the commentaries, we understand there are four ways to practice sampajana other than the normal activities. You need to understand the purpose of your particular activity, sattaka. You need to know, uh, you need to be careful about the particular activity, whether you make mistakes, we call sappaya. You need to find out the domain, which means the torturer uh, in that particular activity. You should not uh, uh, be disillusional. You should not be into ignorance or moha when you uh, do particular activity. So those four uh, aspects should be attached to, should be practiced while you are uh, doing your normal activities. So that is uh, Sampajanyan. And then what about uh, particular manasikara? Now, some people might think that the Buddha tried to demonize the body. No. Uh, Buddha didn't ask people to practice particular manasikara in the first place. He asked people to practice breathing, four postures, uh, sampajan, which means full awareness, right? But what is with particular manasikara? Particular manasikara basically means you're trying to understand that these 32 uh, anatomical parts exist in the body so that you are not attaching them to too much. So it's not a demonization, it's to, it's, it is just to understand what they are. So there is an example, I think kind of a simile. Uh, the simile is, uh, you know, uh, a bag of different grains. So uh, if someone wants to know what is inside the particular, uh, you know, uh, bag, uh, one might think this is rice, this is uh, other grains. So that person's clearly distinguishing different kind of grains in that bag. 
So the same way we understand, uh, this is my heart, this is my eye, this is my... So it's, it's, it is not to demonize your body. It is just to understand what they are. So you are, uh, you are developing a non-attachment to your um, body. When it comes to, um, when it comes to uh, the four elements, we know Patavi, Apu, Tejo, Vayu, and you also understand everything is made of uh, made up of uh, four elements. Patavi means uh, you know this uh, what do you call solidity and uh, call earth element, and Tejo is the heat. Apu is uh, what do you call water, uh, and Tejo uh, is temperature. So everything is made up of these four. So whenever you understand everything. Uh, myself, yourself, computer, everything, they all made up of these four great elements. So you are developing, uh, you are developing an understanding about those particular things, not by making stories about yourself, other people, things, but by understanding the true nature of things are exactly Pataviyapo, Tejavayo, and nothing else. And the final one, uh, which is what we call the 14 exercise, is uh, Navasiva Tika. Now, Navasiva Tika means uh, at that time there was an understanding that, uh, you know, uh, people uh, sometimes looked at dead bodies to contemplate of the nature of the body. So, differences, different nature of the body, like decomposition of the body, uh, was, uh, was uh, taken into consideration for meditation. So, that was. That was good for some people at that time. So these are the 14 aspects of uh, Kaya Nupasana. Let me go into uh, Vedana Nupasana. So in the Vedana Nupasana, what we see is there are nine types of uh, feelings. Sukha, Dukkha, Adukkha, Masukha. Happy feeling, unhappy feeling. Adukkha, Masukha, neutral feeling. And then the Buddha brings uh, six more feelings called wordly, wordly and unwordly feeling. So wordly happy feeling, wordly unhappy feeling, wordly neutral feeling, unwordly happy feeling, unwordly unhappy feeling, unwordly neutral feeling. So for example, I will give you a few examples for that. Now we know what is happy feeling. We know what is painful feeling or unhappy feeling. We know what is neutral feeling. It's a combination of the both. What is Wordly happy feeling. Wordly happy feeling means happiness that you have, happy feelings you have when you are at home, when you are struggling, when you are experiencing six pleasures. And what is niramisa? Uh, niramisa means unwordly happy feeling. She's transcendental. Happy feelings when you are, uh, when you are uh, letting go your six pleasures, right? So when you uh, offer something to someone, so you are happy. Uh, it could be uh, in the form of Rupa Vedana. Uh, sorry, uh, it could be uh, from, uh, it could be in the form of uh, Rupa uh, and then Sadha, Dandha, Rasa, Potabha, Dhamma. I will pick another two. What about Samisa uh, Dukkha? Uh, What's the wordly uh, unhappy or painful feeling? Chagehasita Domana Savitana. So every experience that you have in terms of six, uh, you know, painful feelings. Let's say whenever, when you, whenever you are at home, you are struggling with painful feeling, either in the form of uh, eyes, sorry, uh, images, uh, sounds, uh, you know, everything like that. And what is Niramisa Dukkha, which means uh, unwordly uh, painful feeling. There's an unwordly painful feeling. What is it? It is uh, whenever you are letting go some, uh, you know, experiences in your life, some things to other people, sometimes you let go uh, with pain. I don't want to let this go, but uh, I have to do it. So uh, you are letting go with pain. So that is called Niramisa Dukkha. So in the same way, wordly uh, neutral feeling and unwordly neutral feeling, which means, uh, you know, uh, you know, uh, kind of a, a feeling of equanimity at home, which is Samisa Adukka Masaka Vedana, which means uh, wordly uh, neutral feeling. And unwordly neutral feeling means, uh, you know, uh, 
feelings of equanimity uh, when you are letting go. You are so neutral when you are letting go. So there are two ways to understand Vedana Pasana. One is the ethical side. One is the affective side. So ethically speaking, we know uh, unworldly feelings are the best, right? Uh, and when you talk about from a perspective of affective quality, then you can see affective nature of each uh, uh, feeling. So uh, this is what we had to understand about Vedana Pasana. So you see these nine types of feelings as they are, you are not trying to make stories, you are not fabricating, you are not saying this is my feeling, this is your feeling. You're trying to see uh, the feelings as they are. So you always have to bring uh, definition and refrain even to uh, this Vedana Pasana too. Going on to Chittan Pasana. Now in the Chittan Pasana, we can see 16 thoughts. Let me explain to you um, in, in short details. The first chitta that you may have is saraga, which means you have greed. Second, vitaraga, which is non-greed. Third, sadosa, which means uh, hatred. Fourth, uh, vitadosa, which means non-hatred, metta. Fourth, uh, samoha, which means uh, uh, a thought of delusion and vita moha, uh, non-delusion, a thought of non-delusion. Six, sankitta, we call it, uh, we call it a contracted uh, thought, which means a thought which has both tina and mitta, sloth and topo. When a chitta has tina and mitta, sloth and topo, we say it's a sankitta chitta. Then seven, vikitta chitta. Vikitta chitta means distracted chitta, uh, thought or mind. So how can your mind get distracted only through restlessness, uddhacha? Eight, mahagata. Mahagata, uh, I think there are a couple of translations I would say exalted. Mahagata chitta means you have an exalted mind, which means you have, you won't have this, this exalted mind unless you are born in rupa uh, brahma. So you, whenever, uh, you know, uh, you are born in Rupa Vachara Brahma world, you have Rupa Vachara uh, mind, which is called Mahagata. Amahagata means uh, uh, unexalted, which means uh, Kama Vachara thoughts, which means all the uh, worldly thoughts we have, we call Amahagata. The tenth one is Sautara. Sautara is also, uh, you know, uh, a Kama Vachara type of mind. Which, call, which we call um, surpass. So our thoughts are always surpass because uh, these are the thoughts we have in the Kama Vachara world. Anuttara Chitta means uh, a Chitta that appears uh, to both uh, other people who are born in Kama Vachara world and the Rup sorry, Rupa Vachara world and the Arupa Vachara world. So there are two, there are two uh, Brahma worlds. And the 12th one, Samahita Chitta. Samahita Chitta means a mind which has both Arpana Samadhi and Upachara Samadhi. Arpana Samadhi means the full concentration and Upachara Samadhi means a concentration you will get when you achieve the first jhana. Now, when, so when do you get this uh, Samahita mind, which means the concentrated mind? Only when you, uh, e either when you attain the full concentration after the four jhanas or when you attain minimally the first jhana, samahita chitta. Asamahita chitta means someone who has, who doesn't have the both, uh, which means uh, many of normal people, asamahita chitta. Vimutta chitta means a mind which has uh, both or either of uh, these two, vikambana and tadanga. Some people can uh, withstand uh, some people can uh, withdraw their mind uh, temporarily, or some people can, uh, you know, uh, release their mind uh, by repression, so uh, or the or suppression or repression. So uh, both of that, both of those uh, temporary uh, releasing or uh, releasing by repression or suppression. So that's what we understand by vimutta release mind. The 15th one, which you call 
Abhimutta. Uh, Abhimutta is uh, a mind which is uh, devoid of any release, the normal mind that we all have. So that's how uh, we understand these uh, 16, uh, 16 uh, level of mind. So whenever you have these different minds, you understand, okay, let's say, uh, for example, if I have greed now, I understand I have greed in me now. If I have uh, hatred, I know I have greed in me. Sorry, hatred in me. If I have delusion, I know I have delusion in me. So this is how you understand Chitta Anupasana. And you have to practice refrain as well. Moving on to the final one, Dhamma Anupasana. In the Dhamma Anupasana, what we see is uh, uh, different categories, mental categories of phenomena. If you can see here, let me go back to the slide. Pretty easy. You can see Nivarana, five hindrances, Kanda, five aggregates, Ayatana, uh, we know uh, basis, uh, Bojanga, uh, seven Bojangas, such a vulnerable truth. So whenever you have different, uh, these uh, Dhamma, I would say Nivarana, there are five Kama Chanda, Vyapada, Tiramita, Uttachapi, Vijayacha, you know, I have Kama Chanda now. And this is how the Kama Chanda arise. This is how Kama Chanda is going to uh, go away. Uh, this is how Kama Chanda will arise in the future. So in the same way, you practice this, uh, the, the rest of the uh, Dhamma, the phenomena, because I want to uh, sort of like uh, be speedy. I'm not going into details. So uh, at the end, this is noble uh, truth section. You are trying to understand the four noble truths. So, Finally, let me uh, take this. There is an interconnectedness of the four Satipatthanas. You can see the breath is the starting point and the thing that always works with all the Satipatthanas. Either uh, be that uh, Kaya Nupasana, Vidana Nupasana, Chitta Nupasana, Dhamma Nupasana. So I wanted to say that Breath always works with all the things, like even to postures, even to uh, activities we understand by Sampajana, even to body parts, even to elements, even to a corpse, dead body, even to feelings, even to mind, even to hindrances, even to sense spheres, uh, even to awakening factors, uh, aggregates, noble truth. So they are always a back and forth process. So that means if you can really calm down your breath, you are easily getting to other satipatthanas. And not even to those satipatthanas, but also you can uh, deepen your practice to, uh, uh, you know, stay healthy, calm, as well as to uh, attain the Nibbana at uh, some point. In conclusion, I want to say that uh, the difference between uh, noble, sorry, noble eightfold path and uh, you know uh, the four satipatthanas. I told you at the beginning that noble eightfold path is the direct path to nibbana. Then why it was given in satipatthana suttas that satipatthanas are the only path. Actually, if you can take a look at our Magga and Nyaya, they all refer to uh, noble eightfold path. So which means Satipatthanas are conducive to uh, eightfold noble path. So there's no uh, clash between these two. In the Dhammapada stanza, we also know, Esova Maggo Nathanyo Dasana Savisvatiya, only by following the noble eightfold path, one attains the Nibbana, right? And Satipatthanas help someone to attain, someone to practice uh, Noble Eightfold Path. Okay, conclusions. So the first thing that we need to understand is that what we do in the practice of uh, uh, Satipatthana is that we are trying to de-automatize, de -auto keep, keep this word in mind, we are trying to de-automatize our uh, experiences. This is the main uh, plan in the 
Satipatthana practice. There are different ways to practice Satipatthana, but the main plan in the Satipatthana is to de-automatize our uh, experiences because we normally we automatize our uh, activities, our experiences. So we are trying to de-automatize our habitual reactions, uh, perceptual evaluation. So we are not trying to uh, put them in action. We are trying to de-automatize our habitual reactions and perceptual evaluation. And also, uh, we need to understand that satipatthana is a gradual process. So you need to practice breathing part in order to go to other parts. There may be some exceptional individuals like those quick theorizers who might jump into the manupasana That might be okay with them. But normally, what I encourage you is that try to start, try to think that satipatthana is a gradual process and the breathing is the key. Knowing the breathing is the key to all the other exercises. And even you practicing other satipatthanas, breathing will help you much better. If you don't have good understanding of the breathing, if you don't have a refined, um, calmer breath, you won't be able to practice any other satipatthanas. And also, uh, if, as you can see in this final uh, slide, uh, it, is, it is very clear that the connection between uh, each satipatthana. So breath is the uh, the central part to all the satipatthana. So if you practice breath very well, so you can practice all the other uh, exercises uh, in the satipatthana practice. So breath is the key. While keeping the breath really good, you're going to practice the rest of the satipatthanas really well. And finally, uh, you feel happy because whenever your breath is calm, you are happy, you are not greedy, you are not angry, you are not into the uh, moha, delusion, as well as you are slow, slowly or quickly making your way to uh, Nibbana. Thank you. Uh, Any questions? Uh, thanks, you, Vante, for your great sharing of this lecture. So if anyone wants to ask question, you can raise your hand right now. And you can see one hand is being raised. Uh, in Gunte, you can go ahead. Um, yeah, uh, thank you very much, uh, Pante, uh, for your um, lecture. Very great. Uh, that I also learned some term that very new to me that related to the Satipatthana, uh, like the word Atapai um, or Sampachan. I don't know how to pronounce it. Sampachano. Sampachano and Satima. Yes. It is a term that I, I did not find in the book that I read. Uh, maybe I, I missed it, or maybe I um, I not get this word. Um, but what I, I want to ask you uh, related to um, Kaya, Kaya Nupasana, I, 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 I really interesting in the uh, breading, but I also, uh, because breading, we need uh, a certain place we did a time to like 10 minutes, 20 minutes, or one hour. Uh, actually, we did a place to do it. But I, I, I interest how to do the other, like um, uh, the, the activity, like we, because uh, normally we have um, go to work, we have to do a lot of things in the house. <clears throat> I, I, I just, um, when, I, when I think about sati, when doing something, the, the the thing is it's not it is not not more because we need to observe it so something it will be slow down for example while uh, while eating normally I yes but normally I don't know uh, when we start and then finish so we don't realize that how we chew it slowly down so um I feel that it is really I don't know how to 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 make it done in the daily life how to because I, I feel that it is really slow down everything. And when we have a bath, and when we walk, and when we talk, we need to be a, a bit slow down. So it, it's really against my personality that I, I need to do uh, something very quick. So 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 how can I how can I uh, start to to realize that something needs to be slowed down so you need to 
uh, pay attention to every single activity that uh, would take. Okay, so uh, you, you understand what I mean? <laughs> yeah, shortest advice is to calm, calm your breath and it doesn't always mean that you have to sit down and calm your breath. Let's say you are riding the bus. Uh, we know that the breath always happens if you take a good seat. And if you calm down your breath, there is the key. That's more important because as you can see at the end, the, the last slide, the interconnectedness of all the satipatthanas, it all, all the other satipatthanas are attached to this breath. Because if you don't try to calm your breath down, then we won't be able to do any other satipatthanas. So the, the main thing is that I don't, I don't see that in order to practice breathing, you need to sit down always. So even at this point, you are talking to me and you can calm down your breath. How can we calm down our breath? The easiest way is to just, just to watch your breath, in breath, out breath. And then you are not trying to uh, make it a point that you will be really uncomfortable because you try to uh, refine your bread. The, the, mo the more you refine your bread, the calmer you are. That is the key concept of Satipatthana. Now, a lot of people dis describe, oh, Satipatthana has uh, 21 practices. People don't understand the key here. The key here is the bread. The, the main thing in the Satipatthana Sutta is the bread. If we refine, if we refine our bread, then it, it's like piano. When someone starts playing a piano, they only hear the main sounds, right? But when that person is gonna be a very talented pianist, that person can even hear very subtle, very, very subtle sounds too. Why? Attention to that particular thing. In the same way, when you refine slowly, maybe you are having heavy uh, uh, breaths because of the day-to-day -day activities, but when you are slowly, gradually looking at watching your breath, you know, I have my heavy breath because I'm thinking something else about someone, about something at work. Then you are thinking, no, I'm, I'm trying to de-automatize, de-automatize about my reaction to other people. I'm only looking at my breath. It is no good now. I'm going to calm it, refine it. So it, it is, it is going to be a normal practice, right? So... Uh, you have to find out, uh, uh, you know, uh, how to do it. But I, I say it's a practical thing because it's a, it's a practice of breathing. Does it make thank sense you. to you? Uh, thank you, Pante. Uh, I think a lot of things that I need to learn about uh, Satipatthana. I, I got yeah. some point that you have raised. Yeah. Uh, maybe I, I, I really stick to the rule. So that's why yeah. when we take it to practice, I seem really not not more in 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 the daily life um I, I i have one more question can can i continue my question yeah yeah go ahead okay um i heard you said something related to the slow craving and quick craving slow what, craver what? quick craver not craving oh, slow craver okay, well, quick craver okay. slow theorizer quick theorizer what what is Theorizes. Okay. okay. Can you okay. Let, me, slowly so I can let me tell. Let me tell you. Let me tell you. Some people are. Some people are liking things and people by taking time gradually. Some people like things and people right away. You know what I mean? Let's say. Sorry. Uh, can, can you repeat again? I I cannot okay, catch. Okay. Okay. Some, some of us in our life, some normal people, they like people and things very fast. Like some other people, they take time to like something, someone. So slow craver and quick craver. So for, for slow craver, the, 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 the good satipatthana is kainapasana. They had to work more on kainapasana. For a quick craver, because, they, because their, their, main, their main troubling point is feeling. How they, because the feeling processes very faster than the body, right? You feel you feel you process your feeling much much faster than your body, right? So that's why they are into quick 
quick uh, craving type of thing. So if you are a quick craver, uh, the Satipat candidate you should work more is with an Anupasana. But if you take time to like something, someone, but still you are greedy about it, then Kaya Anupasana. Make sense? Um, okay, so let me repeat. I, I, I want to understand this a bit more. Uh, slow craver here. Um, it means that we, we uh, uh, it is a kind of person that um, uh, can, what, what it, it means that we are, we, we cannot understand. Uh, no, <laughs> no, slow craver, slow craver means someone. We all like things and people, right? In general, yeah. we all like, if you are not an mm. enlightened being, we all like things and people, right? So mm. just, just look at how fast we get to like people and things. So this is about the speed. Some people take time to like other people, things. Some people, they like right away, just now, oh, I want to eat it, I want to feel it. So, th so th the problem that they have is, they are not knowing what their feelings are. So they have to practice with an anupasana uh, much deeper. Okay. Okay. Um, I, I, I'm not sure I understand this. Um, okay. Uh, what's your understanding so far? I, I yeah, yes. I, I feel that, uh, oh, no, no. I, what I, I, I catch from you is like, um, how we know that uh, we like something quicker or slower. What, 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 what it um because it is depend not I, I don't know it, it is depend the situation the person we meet so how we know that it is a slow or a quick when we because yeah, it is related for, for, to yeah forget about forget about other circumstances there are many circumstances where how we used to like someone but but what i'm saying is if some if someone has a lot of criteria to like something or someone. This is what I'm telling you. So if you take a lot of time based on different criteria, it takes time for me to understand you. It takes time to understand this particular thing. That means that means you are not a quick craver. You are a slow craver. You are liking, but one day, but one day, but you are not a quick craver. But there are people who have no criteria. They, they get to like the other person uh, and things, uh, maybe taste, maybe, uh, I mean, pleasantness right away. So they are called quick cravers. Yeah. Okay. It is like the word uh, sensitive. Uh, normally we, we uh, talk about person, uh, some person is not, it's, it's a bit really calm. They do not show their uh, emotion. Uh, it's it, like, it, a, it, can, it, it can be different because some sensitive people don't like other people right away. Some sensitive people, they like right away. So you can't take sensitivity to talk about, uh, to, to mark the difference. So however, on what reason, if someone is to like someone or thing right away, then they are quick cravers. If someone takes time on what ground, they are called uh, slow cravers. In okay. the same way, slow theorizer, and quick theorize. Some people are trying to theorize everything very fast. Oh, you are like, you are very, yeah, they are trying to be judgmental. Oh, you did that. I know you. Huh? I know you, what you are doing. So they are quick theorizers. So they should practice Dhamma and Pasana. Some people take time to, uh, you know, theorize, but they are not into, uh, you know, uh, they are not into uh, what you call craving stuff, but they are into, uh, you know, uh, theories. Okay. And let's okay. give space for right. other people if you yeah. have. Okay, thank questions. you. Thank you, Fante. No problem. Thank you. Anyone else? You can take the mic. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. You can hear me? Yeah. 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 Great. Um, I can't see myself for some reason, but anyway. Um, can I ask one question, Dr. Dr. Venerable? Shandima, please. Um, what is the main distinction between the Satipatthana and Vipassana? What is the main distinction? Okay, Vipassana is the is the way you practice Satipatthana. Ah, right. Okay. Thank you very much. <laughs> no problem. 
Thank you. Okay. Anyone else? Yeah. I have a question, Bonte Dr. Tanama. I, there's two sutta, and I'm interested to um, to know what is this the there's the two sutta, and there's there's two there is um, there are. Um, hold on, what is what is DN twenty two and MN ten stands for? Uh, okay, okay. Sorry about the the confusion of the abbreviation. Okay, here DN. You know, in the Buddhist canon. We have uh, Sutta, Vinaya, Abhidhamma. The Sutta section has five further sections. We call them Nikayas. So one of them is Diga Nikaya, which means the longer suttas. All the longer suttas, including the Diga Nikaya. Second, Majjhima Nikaya, which means middle length suttas. Uh, they are neither longer nor uh, shorter, kind of middle uh, format. So Diga Nikaya, 22. Majjhima Nikaya 10. So there are two uh, sections of the Sutta Nikaya. So Diga Nikaya version of Satipatthana is longer because it's longer kind of suttas. And Majjhima Nikaya, they are kind of middle. Thank you. Yeah. Good. And, and um, I have uh, another question. So there's this, the Sutta uh, <laughs> Satipatthana is a um, body feeling, uh, citta and dhamma. And uh, you indicated that um, the, the body and the, and the vedana is the craving part. Yes. And exactly. then the, the citta and the dhamma is the intellectual Theory speculation. Theory yeah. Okay. So um, can you go into a little depth detail of the, the two, the top a little bit, and then just kind of a, a little examples, you know, for it. Okay, so if you can look at uh, the contents of the first two Satipatthana, Kaya, the body and the feelings, what is mostly, I mean, they are tangible, right? Body is tangible. Feeling is what you feel through this tangibility, right? So that's why they are tangible, right? You see, you see a beautiful mountain, and then that's uh, it's tangible, and then you have a feeling because of that. But when it when it comes to chitta and dhamma, chitta is abstract, right? Dhamma also abstract. They are not they are not things. Chitta, you have a you have a mind like this. You have phenomena and you have a certain different version of phenomena. So they are theories. So they are abstract. I can hear you, uh, friend. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes. So yeah. tangible, tangible things that can be touched. Tangible uh, and then abstract. Okay. Abstract is something we can theorize, right? Theorize. Uh, theorize meaning um, we can't see, right? Or yeah. Something like that, right? Yeah. Okay. But that's we that's where we're getting after these two tangible satipatthanas. We are we must get in there after. But initially we have to work with the tangible stuff and we're getting the abstract stuff. Right. Okay. I'm I'm and so I'm sorry. Um so the best practice, I guess, is just breathing. Because I do have, um, when I sit down, meditation for 15 minutes or so, then I have that Vedana <laughs> body of like not um, mm -hmm. interacting the way that you want it to do. This so in that, do. so in mm -hmm. that particular part, when you're in that moment, you have to, you have to breathe calmer, right? I think that's yeah. your suggestions. Or would you have any good This is not my suggestion only. This is the suggestion of the sutta. Actually, <laughs> okay. actually, if you take a look at a, oh, two Satipatthana suttas without the details, a lot of people, they get caught up in the details. So there are 21 exercises. This is the deal. This is this pasana. This is this anpasana. This is this content. But if you slowly observe what's going on, is only one thing. 
that is a that is an attempt to uh, have a, a more refined breath. So the more you have a refined breath, the calmer you are into understand the uh, feelings and then the mind at different points, whether it is greedy, uh, angry, or dissolutional. Also, you will understand the Dhamma really well because without calming yourself, you will not get in there. Never even think about it. So that's what I'm trying to say. Breath is a central part of all the Satipatthanas. While keeping, you start from breath, keep the breath, maintain it, slowly get into other things, end up in the noble truths, in the Dhammanapas. And um, you also mentioned, part of my last one, you also mentioned about do not demonize, uh, demonize, de-automatize, yeah. de-automatize your, yourself. Um, no, so we're going to de-automatize, not, not automatize. Automatization is the problem. We have to de-automatize because we normally automatize because we react to things and people. They are, they are, they are effects, outcomes of automatization. So what we're going to do with the practice of sati, which is, which is what we see throughout all the satipatthanas, we're going to de-automatize. We're going to stop our natural reactions. We're going to stop our natural habits, but but not by repression, suppression, but by an awareness. This awareness only emerges through breathing uh, as a starting and then slowly we get in there. Okay. Thank you, Bonte. Okay, uh, Bonte, I will have to wind up, I guess, around in, in, about, in about five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I'm just Monday. telling uh, for those who want to ask questions before that. Yeah, go ahead if you still have question. Anyone else? Otherwise, uh, Pante, you can go and you know say any last word, and then we end the session. Okay. okay we always have a last word. Be diligent. The the, the last word of the Buddha. Uh, Vayadhamma Sankhara Appamadena Sampadi. That was the last word of the Buddha, and he he then uh, he then uh, uh, you know passed away, right? So that Appamadena Appamadena is diligence. Buddha said it's like an elephant foot. All the feet of any other animal being in the world can be fit onto, can be put inside the elephant foot. That is like Appamada is the greatest quality. All the other qualities can be put inside Appamada. So then, Atapi, Sampajano, Satima, Vinaya Loke, Abhijja Dhomanasa. This is a definition. Then, Ajatta Bahitta, internally, externally. Samude Vaidhamma Nupasiva, looking at the Anicca Dukkha, not the nature of all the Satipatthanas. And then, uh, we were also talking about other two, uh, which had uh, Satipachupatthita. Anisitocha loka vihrati, right there. So we have to look into definition and refrain by emphasizing the breath and maintaining the breath by passing the craving part through kayanupasana, vedanupasana, and getting into the intellectual part called, two parts called chittanupasana, dhammanupasana. And we will make our journey finalized. You know, end the rebirth body one day. This is our plan. This is what I've been talking today. Uh, and uh, is anyone... Can, can I ask talk a one, one quick question? Yeah. Um, actually, I just um, uh, uh, see this, this word. Uh, you also tell uh, talk about a slow phenomenon and quick phenomenon. What, what does it mean? Slow? No, when I was talking about slow craver, slow, slow craver, quick craver, quick uh, craver, slow theorizer, quick theorizer. What, what theorizer can, can you okay, spell it? Now, okay, now, as I told you, as I told you about the last two satipatthanas, they are chittanupasana, dhammanupasana, they are more abstract. So people mm -hmm. who get stuck in the opposite side of these two satipatthanas are people who are always theorizing. Some people theorize very fast. Oh, okay, some people okay. theorize by taking time. So that's what we understand by slow theorizer, quick theorizer. Okay. Makes sense. Yes. Okay. Yes. Thank, Thank you. you.
Thank you, Bhante uh, uh, Sokmani Puripucho. Yeah, thank, thank you, everyone, so for joining this Satipatthana uh, you know, session. And I also given a talk before about um, uh, redefining four critical aspects of uh, Satipatthana Sutta. Uh, if you can take a look at of uh, that, uh, maybe you can. Uh, by the way, Bhante, can can we have yeah. uh, your I just I just uh, sent uh, point. Yeah. Yeah, I just send it uh, this way. But let me let me find the link for that. Yeah. Uh, then then they can they can uh, listen to more uh, details about uh, you know. Yeah, and they can we have your uh, PowerPoint slide if possible? Ah, uh, yeah, I can. Uh, what if what if I uh, what if I upload them into the blog? Yeah, is so that a you good can thing? The link can, of your blog. Okay. Yeah. Uh, let me let me find the YouTube link for that uh, talk so they can learn more about the Atapi Sampajano Satima Vinayaloki Apichadovana Sampad. So what do you call by def definition part? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much. <laughs> thank you. Have a good night. Have a good day ahead. Take care. Yeah, thank you very much everyone. for your time. Sure. Um, de automatize everything. <laughs> That's the plan. Okay. Take care. Thank you.